Hi, shalom, everyone. I'm going to continue this series of the famous Rabbanim of yesteryear. The fantastic, we've already covered about 240 rabbis over here making fantastic progress. And now today here, it's going to be Yutet Sivan coming in the coming week, 19th of Sivan. Naturally, it's going to be the Hilul and the yard site of a really great Moroccan rabbi over here. And now we're exploring nearly about 300 years ago. There was a passing of Rabbi Yehuda Ibn Attar, Zeche Tzadik Libracha, one of the great rabbis from Morocco from the 17th and 18th century, respectively. He was great. He was a uh, Av Beddin, uh, Dayan, very, very prominent in Fez and in Meknes in Morocco, and was really one of the great rabbonims one of the great rabbis of Morocco itself. He was actually born in the English year 1655 and passed away in the year 1733 at around the age of 38 years old. It's actually very interesting. We, we're going to explore who are the rabbis of his. It included Rabbi Vidal Hatsarfati Hashlishi, who was a great rabbi also in Morocco. He was a Great Morat Siddiq over there in Fez, respectively. Also, there was also Rabbi Menachem Siriro over here, who was a Posek Kalacha and a great Diane also, and a Rosh Hashiva. His Talmudim included Eliyahu, Rabbi Eliyahu Hatsarfati, another great rabbi who was also a uh, Diane in Fez and a great, great rabbi. Also, Rabbi Shemto Ben Amoz, Amozag, who was also a very great one. And uh, the one, he was part of the Ibn Attar family and uh, we'll explore within regards to him. It's actually interesting, the famous rabbi, Rabbi Chaim Yosef David Azulay, a great rabbi we've spoken about before, he is known as Hida, the acronym of Hida. He actually wrote in his book, Shem Hagdolim, about the great rabbi Yehuda, Ibn Atta. What did he say? The great sacred rabbi, the head of the rabbinical court in Fez, and that he was trained in miracles. This was reported over in one of the websites, a Daily Zohar website. The Chida adds, My ears have heard of several wonders that occurred to him both during his lifetime and after his death. I heard from our rabbis, the sacred dones of the West, that he was a sacred man of God, that he was cast into a lion's den, apparently, employed by the Muslims to extract money for the Jews, and was untouched by hungry lions, and having spent there a day and a night, it's highly doubtful that we will ever be able to reach his exalted levels of sanctity. That's what I quote. After what I quote from what I'm reading. After all, if the early ones were like angels, then we are but human beings. Nevertheless, we are obl obligated to learn to walk in his ways and follow his superior conduct and fine qualities. It's actually interesting, the family itself, Ibn Attar, was a really great family, one of the most, most famous Jewish families in Morocco. Another famous member of his family was an, a, a great rabbi we've heard of before, Rabbi Chaim Ben Attar also, probably known as Ora Chaim, who passed away in the year 1743, shortly after Rabbi Yehuda, just, uh, I believe, 10 years after. The so teachers of Rabbi Yehuda were Rabbi Vidal Hatsor, Hatsor Fati, who we mentioned before, and Rabbi Menachem Serero. Also, it's interesting, also, Rabbi Yehuda went up to be the head rabbi. He was Ab uh, head of the Jewish court, and head of the yeshiva in Fez for 40 years. Very, very, very prominent position. Now, he had a famous book, a commentary on the Torah, called the Minchat Yehuda. And I'll quote something that is uh, said over in the Daily Zohar website. As the following incident demonstrates, together with his greatness, we find his remarkable humility. Once, Rabbi Yehuda, the head of the rabbinic court in the kingdom's capital, walked past a stand where a merchant so so sold coals. The man turned to him and said, Rabbi, Rabbi, I'm hungry. Is it okay if you stay here to watch my merchandise while I run home to get something to eat? The great rabbi consented willingly, and the merchant went off. Soon afterwards, Rabbi Yaakov ibn Tzur passed by and was astonished to see the reverend head of the rabbinic court sitting in a marketplace by a stand of coals. He inquired as to what was going on, and the rabbi explained that he was asked to watch over the merchandise while the shopkeeper enjoyed his meal. But what about the honor of the Torah? was posed to him, asked Rabbi Yaakov. Rabbi Huda smiled and said, I have always wondered about the testimony of Rebbe who is that Rav Yehuda Hanasi, that he was prepared to fulfill the wishes of every individual. Anything a person tells me, I'm quoting, I would do. Now I understand what he meant, that even 
if he would be asked to watch over bags of coals, he would agree. And if Rebbe would agree, then certainly I must. So that it's going to be his hilula here on Yutet. Sivan over here, two weeks already. Uh, it will be close to two weeks after the festival of Shavuot. Now let's explore some of the great books he wrote, including the Minchat Yuda, which was drashot on the Torah itself, respectively. I think it was... Uh, the fir- uh, first printing was in the year 1684, included uh, on the Parshat Shvat, respectively, also. And uh, very, very interesting. Uh, also, there was a Shir Mikhtav, also, which was on Halachot, on Shechita, and on Shreifot, also. This was, I think it was uh, printed by, uh, through <coughs> Rab Yisachat Dab Segal in Yerushalayim, or in Varsha, respectively. In the year Tafresh Mem, also there was Sefer Al Dine Get Vachalitza, very very interesting. There was a Perush or Al Midrash Rabah he wrote, also a Sefer Shelot with Shuvot Shut, which was actually based on uh, I think printed in the year 1733, and uh, I think it was reprinted a second time through Rab Moshe Amar in the year 1991, if I am not mistaken, also. He was a very, very much a very great rabbi also. So, uh, yes, it was printed in 1991, a second time by Rabbi Moshe Amma, who would uh, become, go on to become a chief rabbi in Israel. Some of his books remain in manuscript. Also, answers from him are scattered in many of the books of the great Moroccan rabbis of those days. So please don't forget to light candles in the great rabbi's memory. He passed away, as we said before, in the year 1733, nearly about 290 years ago. Just uh, just over that and uh, wishing you all a great day. Take care.